I've been asked now several times if I could do a full-size corner cake shake and brew. One time by my mom, one time by, well, it's time to make it, but I need to make some sort of modifications. At least I want to do that before we start brewing. And I want to brew an American wheat. Had some DME laying around, and I also wanted to push this a1 American Alienist from Angel Yeast, who's kindly sponsoring this video. So I will link down below to their brewing product page. So you can check that out if you want to see what they're offering. And I also use their Yeast Nutrient Brew Nutri Cell for this brew. Always treat your yeast. I'm Dr. Hans, this is Dr. Hans Brewery, my channel about beer and home brewing. This is a full shake to glass video, which means that you get to see the brewing footage and everything, and we get back in the end and taste the beer. And if you want to download the recipe, I put the recipe up on my Buy Me a Beer page, you can go and download that. That is of course free of charge, but if you like what I do here and want to support my work, go ahead and buy me a beer. Thank you! So with no more further ado, Shaken full size corn cake American wheat. Ah, let's kick it. Okay, full size corn cake. Water is coming up to temp. I know I'm screaming, sorry about that. So, this is a normal keg. What I would recommend is actually changing out the tube on the gas side to shortest one you can find. But I don't have any here, so we'll probably find fermenting under pressure and I'm gonna use a little extra trick today. Normally with a mini keg I have been using it as a normal keg with a floating dip tube, but it's always like scary having the holes in there when you shake and if something goes wrong afterwards. So instead I bought this little pressure lid kit. Not gonna use a fancy floating filter today, we'll probably be fine because I, I didn't plan this out. Don't tell editing doctor. So this lid doesn't only like put a third post on the keg, it also means that I can take it off just like with my keg mentor which I love and also the other nine little mini keg maybe the doctor could put up some thank you some epic b-roll of that. Clean a sanitized keg just boil up some water. We try to do something for like maybe an American wheat, need a scissor also. I'm just using what I have. I had a lot of wheat malt and uh, I had a medium spray malt, so we're like winging it. It will probably be beer. Oh, I spilled. I don't know what to do. And I have some fancy ideas for today, so you might want to stick around a little bit. Should I use, it's too late. I should have used the funnel, do it like this. Why didn't I do that? Because I'm stupid. That's like the only thing I hate about DME is that it's the stickiest thing in the world. We're using four bags of DME. Three of them is wheat. So it's, that's 50, 50 blend of wheat and pills the malt. And one of them is a uh, dry malt extract. Well, medium, yes. 30 EBC. Need to sort this mess. I will probably put some boiling water on top of this outdoors. The whole idea with this is simplicity and making great beer with no, no effort and still be able to do your own recipes. I will be using HPC 630 Experimental Hops. 12.4% aroma berry, citrus, stone fruit, sweet, aromatic. Typical beer styles, all styles. Great. 50 grams goes in right now with the hot water. This will probably foam up my camera. Foam. That was 1.7 liters. The doctor will convert everything into birds and stones as usual. Oh, it's a mess. It's a mess. See, they set a timer for five minutes. So I'm trying to have a contact time or five minutes. We need to shake this and our DME everywhere. And the reason for the shaking is to dissolve the DME. We have reached the five minutes and we need to get the wort down in temperature. It's a mess here as always at Dr. Hans Brewery. Put that on there. I'm brewing 16 liter batch. I need to add another 14.3 liters. So this should be a better way to do this, if I don't spill. Some yeast nutrients before we take the temperature down too much, because I forgot. Oh, spilled some. I'm using Angel Yeast Brew Nutri-Cell. Please let me know for where you're watching, but 
Here in Sweden we use a metric and one liter of water weighs one kilo. So simple math. This was not a good idea to do this straight under my expensive camera. But much easier than uh, measure up water. So this should give us like two, maybe with this cake, like three liter headspace. 14 point three. Woo! Good for the muscles. Shake this up again, and we need to get this outside and clean it. Mm, okay, this weighs a lot. This will, of course, not only mix things up, it will aerate everything. Also, oh, should we do the dance? No, we can't. Shake it like the doctor. Shake it like the doctor. You want to see like a full, big, Mike, big pigmenter doing the shaking brew in that one, making an ass out of myself, as always. Tiggy's giving me side eyes. Let's take a sample. 10.44, I think. Let's get the yeast in. I got this sample bag from Angie Yeast, but this is their AO1, American Ale Yeast. And I used this yeast before, it's really solid. I'm just gonna wing it here, not doing any rehydration or anything. I was also thinking we could dry hop it maybe. So another 50 grams of HPC 630. And yes, this is sanitizing this. Let's get this one on so we can close this up for good. Not open. Are you kidding me? Just hit my microphone. It's not as simple with a bigger cake, but you get double the amount of beer. Let's take this one outside and clean, try to clean this up. Okay, it's clean and shiny again, can you see it? And the thing with the uh, AO1, it, is, it says ideally 18 to 25, but it's also fermentation temperature 15 to 28 C, so I'm thinking 30. It's hot up here of course, but I just feel some boiling water down here. It's we're good. I'm gonna start by putting some pressure on here, and the reason why I do this is it's easier to dial in my spanny valve that way. 15, 20 psi-ish maybe, doesn't really matter. Maybe I'll go higher. This will be good. I do have an Inkbird review video if you're interested in the Inkbird. Thermometer probe, sponge, something like, like that. Heat control. This is like heat mat for terrarium. I try to like put everything I use up on my Amazon storefront. Maybe we could do this better. I'm so stupid. A little bit tighter, just like me. Heating mat here on this side and on the other side, we have the thermometer probe. Insulation, save the environment. Something to, Tiggy, have you seen my strap on? I found it. This should probably work. Yes. DIY style. Nice. And I will set this to 30. So we are around 22 degrees Celsius, but I set it to 30 so it will start to heat this thing up. I want this to go fast. This is spanded. I do have a review for this also on my channel. Close this back up until it stops bubbling. What we can do also to get a little bit taller headspace, we'll not get more headspace. Place something underneath there. It's a pizza tower. <music> Next morning and up to 30 degrees Celsius, fermenting like crazy and uh, about 1.5 hours or like 23-ish PSI-ish. What a beautiful brew day. Here we have the beer. It's not as dark as you see it, but it is a little bit darker than you would probably uh, guess for an American wheat. But according to the brew style, it's, it's to style. But I had some medium DME that I wanted to use up, but in my mind, I had a light to call the beer. I would probably have used just the, uh, the wheat in me if I had that. But the beer looks absolutely gorgeous. And it started to clear up now, has a slight haze on it. Ooh, Tiggy likes it. An American wheat versus a German wheat beer, it's not a yeast forward beer. So I want to use a clean yeast for my beer. 
And this is a really workhorse. I've tried it out and this is impressive yeast. I fermented this beer at 30 degrees Celsius to start with. And I'm gonna go through all the numbers and the fermentation, but I need to dive in. Cheers. Uh, maybe aroma. Real nice beer. I didn't want to go overboard with the hops. Because the American wheat I tried here in Sweden have been quite hoppy. They shouldn't really be so much just about the hops. It should also be like let wheat shine in this beer also. And it should never be about banana and clothes. Like for example like a German Hefeweizen. Embrace the madness where the beers flow. Welcome to the Dr. Hans Freak Show. What's up beer bitches? Dr. Hans and Tiggy here with yet another thrilling episode of the Dr. Hans Freak Show! And today's saga, the Clash of the Titans, we're diving into the wonderful world of wheat beers. We have the American wheat versus the German wheat beer. Let's start by zooming into Germany. Germany, home of beer gardens, Oktoberfest and Lederhosen. The German wheat beers is steeped in tradition, bursting with banana and clove flavors. All thanks to the magical work of our friend, Jeez. And those foggy glasses, you might ask? Well, it's a wheat protein in Jeez Extravaganza, giving this brew a mysteriously cloudy charm. Stateside, on the other side of the pond, we have the American wheat. The American wheat is a laid-back cousin to the German wheat and it's all about showcasing the wheaty goodness and hopes. With a little help from a clean ale or a cool law yeast, American wheat skips the banana and clove outfit and jazzes up with the zesty citrus and floral tunes, all thanks to those hoppy American wives. Did you know that the German wheat beer is all in with the wheat, or at least 50 to 70 percent, while the American wheat beer keeps it casual, going lighter on the wheat, but big on character? So what's your flavor? A hearty flavor for German wheat or crisp, refreshing American wheat? Each one got its own style and story. And now, back to the real world Dr. Hans and Tiggy with their American wheat. It's an American wheat! Next pour where wonders grow. Farewell from the Dr. Hans Freak Show. Really nice, like, fruity smell to it. And I never used that hops before. Really nice. Almost like candy. Cheers. So you can definitely taste like the wheat and the hop shines through really well. Even though they have meant to this at 30 degrees Celsius, to start with, because I pushed it up to like 33 Celsius, this is clean, but it is fruity. But it's clean in that sentence that it doesn't have any off flavors at all. Now what? Even hotter? Let me know down in the comments. This beer is not over the top at all. We don't have like a massive G's character. We don't have massive bitterness. We don't have massive hope character. Did I say massive? What we do have is a really nice, more sophisticated beer, I would say. There's nothing unsophisticated about a German wheat beer, but don't, don't hate. Let's dive into the numbers, shall we? All of the numbers for this brew was according to style, both in Brewfather and uh, according to the BGCP. Is that correct? Yes, I think so. The OG of this beer was 1044 and we fermented it down to 1011. This was fermented out in almost instantly because at 30 degrees Celsius, yeast is working very rapidly. Fast. I set the spawning valve to around, what was it, like 1 bore, 15 psi, but there was so much fermentation going on, and I think I got it on tape, I thought we put it as epic b-roll. The fermentation was going crazy, so the spawning valve didn't really keep up, so this actually fermented at around 1.5 bar, 22 psi-ish, to be kind of exact, so I started ramping this after one day of fermentation and at day three I was up to 33 celsius and fermentation was over and it has been sitting now for 
I would say at least two weeks in the keg conditioning. It wasn't bad when it's super fresh, but it's, it's much more sophisticated beer now than I, when I first tried it. I did try it as uh, behind the scenes for my patrons and channel members, and we'll do exactly the same. I have a beer here, we'll try this after I'm done with this recording. Thank you so very much. So the original gravity was 1044 and this fermented down to 1011, which gives us an ABV of 4.4. 44% ABV ish. IBU around 19, and I think that could be correct, but it's just estimation. And uh, yeah, the shaking brew is an easy brew method, so but it's a balanced beer, and that's what counts in the end. I highly recommend that you try to brew an American wheat and of course try a shaking brew. If you can't get your hands on Angel Yeast A01, maybe you could do US05. I haven't fermented US05 this hot, but it's a clean fermenting yeast also, if you're not fermenting at too low temperature to be honest. Otherwise for American wheat you could use log yeast, so that could be like BF27, BF16 from Angel Yeast or any other log yeast that you like. W3470 for example, nice yeast. And if you are new to the shake and brew method, I do have a full playlist down below because I've done this several times now with great success. And if you're into wheat beers, I did like a shake and Hefeweizen already. Cheers and thanks for watching. Tig, you have anything to add? Oh, see you in the next one. The Octohans out.